All right, so let's say I am a consumer of data, someone such as a data analyst, a data scientist, or BI user. And I'm interested to answer a particular business question. For example, I might want to understand what are the states with highest opioid overdoses for 2017. Now, on the surface level, this might seem to be a simple question, but there might exist a couple challenges to answer this question. First, I need to find this information. My enterprise might have many different sources of data, and just figuring out where to look or who to ask is in many instances the first barrier to insight. Second, once I find the information, how do I know I can trust what I find? Is the column or table accurate? Is there a preferred table or certified BI report for this type of analysis? So information stewardship is really key and integral to addressing these challenges. And the key for stewardship is not to restrict access, provide gates to the data, but the key is really to provide the guardrails to guide people to desired behavior. And in doing so, your organization can maintain a free-flowing approach to data consumption while also enforcing compliance. So let me show you how Alation can help an information steward accomplish this. So as a steward of the data, it's not just about right or wrong, but more importantly, it's about consistency because the advantage of consistency is that even if something is wrong, the steward can make a change in one place and have that change propagate to all the necessary areas. So exposing consistency in automation is really key to driving successful stewardship. Now, one way Alation enables this is through catalog sets. And catalog sets are a way to group similar like data assets through a specific rule and then apply bulk editing on those grouped objects. Now, the rule could be to group fields that contain PII, for example. Here, I have a catalog set that groups uh, fields that contain social security numbers that's uh, grouped by a specific regx expression. And I see here 27 fields tied to multiple data sources. So let's go back to my original opioid example. And let's say there's some type of ETL issue on my opioid database. And so what I find because of that ETL issue is that data is actually missing from a few states. So not all US states are represented in this data set. Now, how can I flag this issue and propagate the warning to all the affected data sets in an expedient way? So let me show you how you can do this with catalog sets. Now here, what I'll do is I'll create a new catalog set. I'll go ahead, I'll call it something very original, like state. I will go ahead and apply my rule. So I will look for uh, columns that start with state within the opioid database. I will then go ask Alation to automatically find all those uh, fields that match my rule. And so here I see uh, six fields within that opioid database. And if I want to, I can go ahead, I can open up one of the fields and I'll see that the information within this field is actually pretty bare. So here's the catalog page within this field and don't see much information here. So let me show you how you can change that through catalog sets. Now what I want to do is I want to issue a warning across all these grouped members. And what I can do is I can go ahead, I can go to the shared fields tab in catalog sets. I can say um, warning information in this set does not include uh, the state's Kauai, Kentucky, and Florida. So I would go ahead, I will issue that warning, um, and I'll see that warning show up here. I can also add extra contextual information. Uh, maybe I wanna add a steward, so I'll add myself as a steward. I might wanna add a tag, and I can go ahead and I will tag this as the opioids project. Uh, this information also does not contain PII, so I'll go ahead and set that flag to no. And so the nice thing about catalog sets is as soon as I make this change, I can go back to the, uh, the catalog page for the field I was looking at earlier that was pretty bare, and I can go ahead, I can reload this field. And what I'll see in real time is I'll see the changes that I had made propagate to all the members of this grouped set. Here, I see the warning that I had issued earlier. I see I added myself as the steward. Um, I also see the tag that I set as well as that this information does not contain any PII. So catalog sets really is not just about helping enforce consistency, it's really to help for the stewards to make that stewardship process much more efficient by autom automating otherwise manual and tedious work.
Okay, so now let's switch hats for a sec from a steward to a data consumer, someone such as an analyst or a data scientist. And let's go back to answering the business question I had posed earlier. What are the highest states with opioid overdoses? Now, how can I go about and find this information? Well, I can do a couple things. Uh, first, I can go to Lation and I can go to the heterogeneous search bar and I can type in opioid overdoses. And I see a bunch of relevant catalog data assets start to um, pop up. So I'll go ahead and I'll click on the first one, which is an Alation article. Articles in Alation are like wiki on steroids. And I say that because not only are the data assets tied to the article, here I see uh, tables, um, I also see queries, um, as well as BI reports. But this is also a living document. And what I mean by that is uh, here is a sample table um, from a specific data source. Now, if this table changes in the data source, then the article will automatically change as well in real time. So it gets dynamically updated. And so you're always looking at the most uh, relevant information here. Now, taking a look at this table, I see that this table might be what I need in order to help me along my path to insight about the opioid overdoses. And what I could do is I can go ahead and click on uh, this uh, table, which brings me to the catalog page. And here at the catalog page, I see a bunch of relevant information, um, a description. I see some usage information uh, detailing to me what are the most popular columns within this table. I can take a look at queries, um, filters, uh, joins, and filters. And I see some of these filters and joins have been um, endorsed as well. So that gives me more confidence. Alation also does a deep parse of the query logs. And because we do a deep parse of the query logs, we're also able to determine who the top users of, are, of the table are. So if I have a question that goes beyond the scope of what's here in the catalog page, I can have Alation automatically notify me of who those top users are, and I can ask them a question directly. All right, so for our more advanced users, Alation provides the ability to pull the information yourself through our SQL editor called Compose. The powerful thing about Compose is that in real time, it feeds you metadata and context as you work. So as someone is writing his or her query, you get smart suggestions of what fields are recommended based on usage patterns from other people within the organization. All right, so let me go ahead and try to answer that business question I posed earlier. What are the states with the highest opioid overdoses for 2017? So I'll go ahead and I'll begin writing my query. Now, with the release of Alation 5 R1, we have also introduced a powerful capability called Trust Check. Now, with Trust Check, data assets that have been endorsed, deprecated, or worn in Alation will get highlighted with a color coded indicator as a user is writing his or her query. So here, I see a yellow color coded indicator, a yellow color indicator show up here on state underscore name. Uh, and this highlights a warning that this field does not contain the specific states, Hawaii, Kentucky, and Florida, which earlier as a steward, I had flagged through catalog sets. So uh, nothing against Hawaii, Kentucky, and Florida, but um, I'm okay with excluding those states from my, my analysis. So I can go ahead and continue with my query. But for instance, if a field contained PII, uh, this would actually get shown as red or deprecated, and that might actually change my behavior. So let me go ahead and finish writing this query. Now, another nice thing about uh, Compose is that it gives you recommended uh, tables to join on the one I'm using. So I'll go ahead, I'll select the census info table. And I'll go ahead and also, also select the recommended join field. Now, I also have predefined filters that I can set up in Alation. So I'll go ahead and specify one of the predefined filters. And since this information is based on 12 month ending period, I will specify that 12 month ending period as June 2017. And I will group by state. And since I know that some, since I'm not concerned with uh, Hawaii, Kentucky, and Florida, then I'm going to ignore the warnings I see in the four fields listed here. I'll go ahead, I'll run my query. I'll ignore the uh, filter recommendation for now, and I'll get the result.
So uh, as a steward, I've done two important things for the consumers of data. One, I've established the necessary guardrails to guide an analyst to consistent and proper use of data. And two, uh, I've been able to help with compliance but while still maintaining a free-flowing approach to data analysis. All right, so I've shown you a glimpse of how Lation can help provide stewardship across your data sources. But what if I want to provide stewardship across my BI reports? That's another challenge in itself. But let me show you how Lation can help with that. Now, here I am in Tableau Server. I have uh, 18 workbooks tied to 15 projects here. Um, I also have one data source. Um, and so this is a demo environment. In a more realistic scenario, you might have tens of published data sources. So imagine I'm the Tableau steward. And people in my organization, they like to publish data sources in Tableau so they can share things such as calculations and field metadata more readily with each other. And as a steward, how can I provide the necessary guardrails so that people know what are the correct data sources to use? And let me show you how. Now, let me first go to Alation and let me search for that uh, data source. I see that data source here is cataloged in Alation. I can go to Alation, I can view um, the connections, I can view some of the measures and dimensions, and I can also take a look at the lineage. So as a steward, I can validate that this data source is accurate, is credible, and what I can do in Alation is I can go ahead and I can endorse it. And by endorsing it in Alation, what will happen is this will certify it in Tableau Server because of the deep integration that we have with Tableau. And so what I'll do is I'll go and I'll reload this, this page. And now I see a certified ribbon here. It says it's been certified by me. Uh, and this gives notification to the rest of the organization that this data source is accurate, it's valid, and it can be consumed and utilized in order to derive analysis. So as a Tableau steward, I'm able to validate the gold standard of reports and communicate this back to a broader audience in a grassroots collaborative way, resulting in more consistency and trust in my organization. Okay, so I've shown you the ability to certify data assets in Tableau. As I mentioned earlier, through our native APIs, other third-party applications can integrate with TrustCheck. So we have also worked with another one of our partners, Salesforce, to integrate TrustCheck with Salesforce Einstein Analytics. So let me show you how it works. Now, here I am in Einstein Analytics, and let's say I'm a VP of Sales. It's Q3, and I'm interested to understand how my Q3 opportunities or pipeline is progressing. Now, what I could do to find out this information, I can go to Einstein Analytics, I can go to the search bar, and what I'll do is I'll type in Q3 opportunities. Now, what I see is two dashboards that show up to me, uh, for me, so that's great. But what's not so great is these dashboards seem to indicate the same thing. So if I take a look at the first dashboard, it says Q3 opportunities. And if I look at the second one, it says Q3 opportunities dash new. I can take a look at the thumbnail sketch and the icons. I see uh, the actual pipelines are different. So now the natural question arises is which one do I use? So what can I do at this point? I could actually go into the dashboard. I can try to go ahead and scrub the numbers and try to reconcile everything. But this is probably not the best use of my time. So let me show you how you can do this in Alation. Now, let's say I am uh, an information steward or I am um, a person in sales ops. And so what I want to do is I want to promote the consistent use of ICE and analytics assets within my organization. And so let me show you how you can do that. Now, going to Alation's interface, I'll go to the heterogeneous search bar again. I will type in Q3 opportunities. And now I see two dashboards that are surfaced uh, and cataloged for me. So what I can do is I can go ahead and click on the first search result. Now, the first thing I might notice is I might notice the thumbnail sketch. And just to confirm that this is indeed the dashboard that I was looking at in Einstein Analytics. Now, I also see some interesting contextual information. I see that this dashboard is work in progress. It's missing Q3 opportunities from some of the sellers, so it's still incomplete. I see who the steward is, so if I have a question that extends beyond the scope of this catalog page, I can go ahead and ask Hannah. I also see that there's a tag that says work in progress, and there's a low quality score on this dashboard. 
So this is very interesting business context. But let me go ahead and take a look at the second dashboard. So here, the first thing I notice is this is the official dashboard to use for Q3 opportunities. I see that this has also been tagged as Einstein certified. I see the, who the stewards are, so if I have a question, I can ask those people. I see a high quality score, and just to make sure, I see the thumbnail sketch that I was looking at in Einstein Analytics. Now, what I could also do if I want to, I could actually go ahead and take a look at the fields to make sure the calculations were actually done correctly. Now, after taking a look at these two dashboards and the context behind these two dashboards, what I want to do is I want to actually promote the consistent use of the Q3 Opportunities Dashboard to the rest of the organization. And let me show you how I can do this with TrustCheck. So what I could do is I can go ahead, I can endorse the Q3 Opportunities Dashboard. I can go to the Q3 Opportunities Dash New Dashboard. And what I can do is I can go ahead and deprecate this. So I will say, do not use. This is still work in progress please use this dashboard instead. And what I could do is I can actually point to the accurate dashboard. And I'll go ahead and I'll deprecate that. And you'll see the deprecation here. Now, let's go back to Salesforce Einstein Analytics. And restarting my flow as the VP of Sales, let's say I want to actually look for those Q3 opportunities. Now, what I could do is I can go to Q, type in Q3 opportunities into the search bar and now I will actually see those dashboards that I was looking at earlier show up for me but that act of actually deprecating and endorsing those data assets within Alation gets automatically propagated to Einstein Analytics and now I see two badges so one I see a do not use badge on the Q3 opportunities dash new and then here I see a certified badge on the Q3 opportunities dashboard so coming in, now I know immediately which dashboard is accurate uh, and which dashboard I should not use. All right, so I've shown you how TrustCheck is applicable not only in Alation Compose, but also in third-party applications through our native APIs. And TrustCheck introduces real-time data governance guardrails directly into the workflow of self-service analytics users. And the result is that users are automatically alerted to both constraints and best practices leading to more timely, accurate, and compliant analysis.